Let's keep going. Your blood pressure is constantly under control. Your blood pressure change is correct, but it's part of the negative feedback loop. It's part of the negative feedback loop. So you don't want your blood pressure fluctuate too much. That's actually dangerous. Uh, when your blood pressure level, blood pressure is too high, it, it can cause a stroke. It can rupture the blood vessel and cause the ischemic stroke. Or it can cause cardiovascular heart 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 attack. It can it can happen in the heart. So the all the cardiovascular disease are the same. It's it's damage in the in the blood vessel in the downstream of the tissues could not get enough oxygen. So if it happens in the brain, the stroke. If it happens in the heart, there's heart attack even though they're they're pretty far away. And you don't want your, your blood pressure to drop to be to be too low because when the blood pressure drops to be too low, you you don't have enough blood to, to go to your brain so you can fall into coma. It happens to uh to to some patients their blood pressure remain too low. They they pass out. The reason is they don't have enough blood oxygen to go to the brain. So the blood pressure is part of the homeostasis so you want to be able to maintain your blood pressure that means your body gonna have the negative feedback loop to maintain the blood pressure so we talk about this in unit one stimulus integrating center and the tissue response to it uh, that's this right so the stimulus say your blood pressure increase blood volume increase uh, the example so the poor lady she drank two liters of water uh, to win the Wii for her kids. That's what happened in the body. So your blood volume increase. When your blood volume increase because your cardiovascular system is a closed circuit. So you pour water, uh, you, you you increase the blood volume, blood pressure gonna increase. When the blood pressure increase, your body have the sensor barrel receptor. Barrel receptor are the the stretch receptor that are in your blood vessel, big blood vessel in the aorta and carotid artery. They constantly uh, monitor your blood pressure. Excuse me. And this will trigger the response. The response, you have two. One quick, one slow. Not so slow, actually. Minutes. So the quick one, seconds. You're going to send a signal to your CVCC, Cardiovascular Control Center, in your medulla oblongata. Your CVCC, well, your CVCC can control your sympathetic, parasympathetic. So when your blood pressure increase, the quick response is it going to decrease the sympathetic. It's going to increase the parasympathetic because you don't want to make the situation worse. So what's going to happen is it's going to activate the parasympathetic, decrease the sympathetic. When you decrease the sympathetic, your cardio output decrease. And when you decrease the sympathetic vessel dilation to provide less output to the alpha receptor to the, to the arterial vessel dilation. So both of them are going to decrease the blood pressure. That's the quick response. That's the quick response. And you have another one, slow response. Slow response is not that slow. It takes a while. So when you drink a lot of water, well, you know what's going to happen. You're going to, you're going to go use the bathroom a lot because your kidney and you found this the strategy. Your body really just one stimulus trigger one response. Your body gonna activate everything within its power to fix the problem. So in this case, when your blood pressure increase by incre by drinking too much uh, water, your blood volume increase, it gonna activate everything within its power to to fix the problem. So it will activate the CVCC, uh, decrease your cardio output. It can also ask, okay, would, would the kidney work? And the answer is yes, because kidney filter your blood, become urine. Your urine directly come from your, uh, come from your blood. So it will ask the kidney, ask the kidney to increase the filtration rate and turn more blood into urine. So your blood volume decrease. And when your blood volume decrease, your blood pressure decrease. And diuretic medicine mimic this. Diuretic medicine will make you to pee more. So when your total blood volume decrease and uh, your blood pressure decrease. And some athletes take diuretic medicine to lose weight, especially in some uh, martial art uh, 
competition, they, they, they use their body weight to put them into different level. Uh, some athletes want to go to the lower level, they have a higher chance to win. They, they try to lose weight and they take diuretic medicine. And side effect is they can cause kidney failure because this is where those diuretic work. And eventually your blood pressure drops. So it's part of the homeostasis and you want to maintain your blood pressure. You don't want it to go out of control. This is the barrel receptor reflex. In your body, your blood pressure is part of the uh, part of the homeostasis. So you have the barrel receptor, that stretch receptor, and you put them in the most important artery. So one, put them in the aorta, of course, and the second one. Well, you have so many artery. Where do I put? We're probably gonna put them into the artery to send the blood to the brain. So you put it in the uh, carotid aortic carotid uh, artery. That's the blood vessel to send the blood to the to the uh, to the brain. So you found in some, if you like to watch the UFC, you found, okay, why they're going to chuck other people and why why, why they, they're going to tap out? Because uh, if you block this, uh, if the, the they don't they don't tap out, they're going to pass out in three seconds. Nobody can find the carotid artery. This is called the anatomical weak point. No matter how hard you, you exercise, you won't be able to train this, this anatomical weak point. So this is the blood vessel to, to send blood. And when you put your finger in your neck, you can, you can actually feel the pulse here. It's, it's the blood vessel to send the, the blood to your brain. So they put the receptor here and here. And their stretch receptor. Their stretch receptor means when your blood pressure increase, they're gonna be stretched more, so they fire more. And when they're being stretched less, they, they fire less. So they can't provide a constant feedback to your control center, that's your CVCC. And your CVCC depends on the output. Say you you can activate both sympathetic and parasympathetic. So if your blood pressure increase, it can activate parasympathetic, decrease sympathetic, because it try to decrease the blood pressure. And the update, say if your blood pressure drop, you're about to pass out, it will try to activate the sympathetic and decrease the parasympathetic, so you can able to maintain your blood pressure. And let's look at their, their output. So if it's parasympathetic, parasympathetic only work on the heart rate. This is SA note. Sympathetic can work on a lot. Sympathetic can work on the pacemaker cells, increase the heart rate. It can also work on the contractile muscle to increase the contractility. So in the heart, sympathetic have two innovation, in the pacemaker cells and in the contractile cells. It can also work on the arterial alpha receptor. So you can cause the vessel constriction, globally increase the blood pressure of the whole body by globally increase the resistance. It can also work on the vein because what, when you send more blood from the vein back, so your, your vein is like the container, the reservoir for, for your blood. 60% of your blood stay in your vein when you're not exercising. And it can cause the vein constriction when you constrict the vein or constrict the skeletal muscle. And or increase your uh, thorax, uh, the, the respiratory pump, it can increase your breathing. So all of this can make more blood go from the vein back and according to the Stalin's law, when you send more blood back to your ventricle, um, they love to work. So when you send more blood back, they, they're gonna send more blood out. So sympathetic have more, much more innovation compared with parasympathetic. And the reason is when the sympathetic system needs to be activated, well, that's the emergency situation. Uh, when you see a bear coming towards you, the seconds make a huge difference. So you want to quickly activate your whole body, you're able to deal with the emergency situation. Compared with parasympathetic, when the parasympathetic system needs to be activated, that's when, you, when the em emergency situation is gone. So you have time to, you have time to slow down to decrease the blood, blood pressure. So the parasympathetic only innovate on the SA node and sympathetic innovate on much more. And this is the barrel reflex. This is the barrel reflex. Say when your blood pressure increase, so what happens? When your blood pressure increase, eventually this is the negative feedback. So eventually you want to decrease the blood pressure. So you found the output is blood pressure decrease. Go through the negative feedback. It's a negative feedback. So when your blood pressure increase, you're gonna fire the barrel receptor 
the sensor input gonna go to the CBCC. And the CBCC gonna innovate sympathetic, parasympathetic. And depends on the situation, this time blood pressure in increase, you want to decrease. So it will activate the parasympathetic. Parasympathetic only innovate as a node, so they're gonna use acetylcholine and bind with muscarinic acetylcholine receptor on the SA node. So it will slow down the heart rate, decrease the cardiac output. It also inhibit sympathetic. And sympathetic have more globally control. You can, you can have alpha receptor control the blood uh, blood vessel diameter, gonna have a beta one control the contractile cells and beta one contract the uh, uh, control the SA node. So all these three inhibit. So eventually your blood pressure decrease. And this output, we talk about the negative feedback in unit one. This is output can work on as an input. So eventually your blood pressure is pretty, pretty well maintained. And this is the barrel receptor reflex. Okay, that's it.